Hi everyone, I'm Marie and me and the most magical fairies are coming to you live from Living Felt because it's Happy Wally Wednesday! Oh, that's what I wanted to hear. Those fairies have been making magic all morning long and cooking up some goodness for you, I promise. So welcome to the live show. Hey, if you just found us, stick around today. We are going to die silk scarves and fabric it's oh so easy and if you are starting to nano felt you're gonna love that you can dye your own silks or if you just need a quick gift for a girlfriend well then you can dye a scarf too so lots of fun you can have with this we're gonna break it down today it's so easy it takes minimal supplies and tools and yeah we just got a few tips that'll help you get going started pretty quick so thank you all for being here and I see some of our friends are already joining us I see Lori in Tennessee hey there and Teresa in the UK Okay. It looks like we have a lot of Tennessees today. There's Joan. We have Sharon in Canada. And happy birthday, Marjolene in the UK. Y'all say happy birthday to Marjolene. Happy, happy birthday, Marjolene. <laughs> oh, and Beverly in Washington, Carol in Michigan, and so many more beautiful friends. Thank you so much for joining us for the live show. So this is an interactive hour-ish, and there's a good opportunity to ask questions, offer your own tips, and when you do that, you get entered into our drawing to win fun prizes that we give away at the end of the show. But hey, if your questions don't get answered, um, you can still comment down below after the live feed and you can be entered to win a prize too. So last week we had a lot of fun. We needle felted. We used a different technique uh, using dissolvable paper, uh, water soluble paper. And we made a little thank you pillow cover. So I want to say a big congratulations to our two winners for posting after the live show, posting comments. Roseanne Lynch wrote, love, love, love this. And Daria Hagenlock, I don't know if I'm saying that right, Hagenlock, she won also. So she said that this, she's been looking for ideas for Thanksgiving projects and she can't wait to give this a try. So both of these gals win the supplies for our project last week and you can find that under our needle felting playlist or under the Willy Wednesday playlist too. So the fairies are here and we always like to spend a few minutes, they like to show you a few things that might support today's project or the projects that we've been working on in general, sometimes show and tells. And um, if you're watching the playback, you can always hit the fast forward, but make sure to pause and give us a thumbs up. Let us know if you like today's video. <laughs> and thanks so much. First up is Fairy Hannah. <laughs> Hey everybody, how y'all doing today? So I've just got a little show and tell for y'all since it's cooling down in some parts of the world, not here, but in some parts of the world it's cooling down. I've been doing a lot of cowls. So this is going to be one of the cowls I did. You can see the inside is going to be black habitat. And then since we're dying today, I wanted to show y'all this is one of my favorite little elements. It's some wool yarn that I hand dyed using the Jakarta acid dyes. And then my other little guy, which I really like because I went, I got a little funky with the colors on this one. There's some lagoon hankies, some onion sari silk waste, which is like one of my absolute favorites. And then some of our 16 micron merino top. I just wanted to share those with y'all today, and I hope y'all have fun dying with Marie. And next up, we got Miss Fairy Holly. Thank y'all. Hi everyone. So I like wet felting, and I'm working on my techniques. And this is a perfect way for you to work on yours with the wet felting of flower kit. Um, it comes with. Almost everything you need comes with all the fiber, merino top, some of our silk blend, and some embellishment fibers. Woo, we have locks and sorry silk waste in there. We have a couple of different colorways. Um, and the only other things you'll need are, let's see, soap and a bamboo mat or, um, oh my gosh, bubble. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what happens to me on Wooly Wednesday. <laughs> but these are some of the, the finished products, and they're super pretty, and they're kind of like fun and whimsical, and you can like kind of add your own little spin on them. I'm kind of thinking if I ever get my act together, I'm going to make some red ones and kind of make poinsettias for Christmas and be like Texas and just skip fall and just go straight to winter. Yeah. So, <laughs> but we also have a poinsettia kit. So. Oh, that's true. There is a poinsettia kit. So <laughs> practice and then get the poinsettia kit. Okay, so now is Fairy Anne. <laughs> Thank you 
you so much for being here with us today. I am sharing with y'all one of my favorite color palettes ever. This right here is our specialty designer bundle in fall gathering. It's perfect for perfect palette for all your fall projects. It's going to come with 10 ounces of merino top, 2 ounces each in Bordeaux, honey, burnt orange, and prairie. It's going to come with 2 ounces of merino silk blend, 1 ounce each in Pueblo and sunflower. And then it's also going to come with tons of fun embellishment fibers as well. This right here is Angelina in Forest Blaze. Bamboo Top in Amethyst, Tussa Silk in Saffron, Silk Hankies in Olive, Sari Silk Waist in Bordeaux, and then Wool Neps in Pumpkin and Cocoa. This is seriously one of my favorite bundles ever. <laughs> I hope y'all <laughs> like it too. You're getting lots of love for that one. Yeah. Oh. oh my God, so pretty. Love the fall colors. Beautiful colors. Oh, love the look of that bundle. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Next up is Fairy Becca. Thank you. We missed you, Becca. Oh. <laughs> Hi guys, it's Fairy Becca. It's good to be back. <laughs> needle felting um, and you're looking to build up your studio stash, I wanted to show you our MC1 Studio Pack Fall Fun. So what we have here is just per the perfect color palette for all your fall or harvest inspired projects. You can make pumpkins, leaves, just a whole pumpkin patch if you'd like. Mm -hmm. But um, the colors do vary from round to round so I wanted to show you what was in our current batch. We have hot orange, espresso bean, pomegranate, grape, mango, and true olive. And in each pack you get six different colors, half ounce increments each. It also comes with a handy dandy color sheet so you can help identify them with. Um, I think this package is absolutely wonderful. So if you're feeling the holiday spirit, this is the perfect pack to trick or treat yourself to. <laughs> Up next is Fairy Kayla. <laughs> hey everybody, Fairy Kayla here. And we've been having so much fun dyeing stuff in, in our, our washroom here that I just wanted to share some stuff that, that we've been working on in-house. So these are just some of the fall locks that we've got um, in-house. And we've got Wildwood, Lavender Fields, Autumn Gold, and Harvest Moon. They come with an ounce each in the bag, so you get lots to work with. And yeah, if you don't want to dye anything yourself, we dyed some for you right here. <laughs> <laughs> so now I've got a question for you folks. So why do birds fly south in the fall? Why do birds fly south in the fall? Because it's way too far to walk. <laughs> jokes <laughs> for sure for sure thank you all so much for being here let me turn this guy off thank you all so much for being here happy woolly wednesday those are the fairies these are the gals who answer the phone they answer your emails they pack your orders and they make everything we share with you extra extra magical and for those of you who don't know us so we are based in central texas but as you can see we have friends all over the world everyone's saying hi and where they're from so as you join be willing just to say hi and where you are i see folks just everywhere and we love that you are spending some time with us today so i wanted to share just a really quick an easy way to dye your own silk fabrics. You could kettle dye on a so stove top, but if you have a microwave, whether you have one in your craft studio, art studio, or you have one um, in your kitchen, you might consider using it for dyeing. Now, um, some people don't use their microwave for dyeing. I only have a microwave for dyeing, so if you do, make sure that you clean it really, really, really well. Just say that. But hopefully, you, you know, microwaves are pretty cheap now. If you decide you like this and you want to keep doing it, then you can and just get yourself your own little dye microwave. We're going to dye some um, silk fabrics today, and I'm going to break down the supplies for you. Are we ready to go, Anne? 
We are ready to rock and cool, roll. Cool, 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 cool. Okay, so I saw one question that came up to start, and that was, could you also dye locks this way? And the answer is yes. I tend to do kettle dyeing for locks myself. I don't I don't know why. Like the wool, I, I don't love microwaving the wool myself. I feel like it's a little harsh on it. But give it a try and see what you think. I like a low immersion process for dyeing wool. But I think a few years back when we did the microwave dyeing, we did dye wool locks also in the microwave. So um, I know we shared it. That's not to say I know you can do it. I know you can do it, but we shared it and it was a really old video for those of you who might still be around and remember that. For today's show, there is one thing you can download. It's under the description. I think I don't know if I included it under the description now, but we'll make sure to do it after the show. And it's just going to share with you the basic supplies that I'm using today in our lesson. So we have a variety of soaps you can work with, and we've shared, I can't believe I didn't bring one dry, undyed piece of soap. Would you just grab me a couple of things? Um, we have a variety of silks here in the shop. We're gonna be working with white silks today. So we have Habitai or Ponji. Those are the same thing. We carry uh, five Mome. Uh, we still, we might still have some eight Mome scarves around, but we've moved down to a five Mome. Mome, when you see that on silk is, Basically, it's a weight of the silk, which talks about the density of that silk. So when you see a number that says five, some people say mommy. I speak funny, so I might say mommy or mommy, M-O-M-M-I-E. M-O-M-M-E, M-O-M-M-I-E. Anyway, it's the weight of the silk. So if you, it assumes that the silk bolt is 45 inches wide by 100 yards long, and it's how much that silk would weigh. So a five, that bolt would weigh five pounds. If it's 3.5, that bolt would weigh 3.5 pounds. Why do you care? The, the only reason to care really is when we're felting, the different weights of fiber and the different or silk and the different types of silk are going to felt differently. So notice what you have and what you're working with as you're um, nano felting. If you're nano felting, thank you, Anne. Um, so you can identify how it behaves, just as in part of your studio notes. Note what you have. So I'm going to be sharing with you how to dye this colorway today, and then on the little supply list you can uh, download, it'll show you how to dye this colorway, and I'll show you these up close and personal. You are welcome to ask questions, stop us if you like. And I brought just a few different types of silk, or Anne did. This is a Margalon silk, which is from Uzbekistan. We import it. It's very, very sheer. It makes a really great lining for a dress, for a coat, for anything that you're nano felting. It just makes a great lining. It's uh, considered sparse. It's like, it's kind of like the cheesecloth of silk. It's very delicate and it will stick to any little uh, roughy bits you have on your fingers. It will stick to them. Like you'll feel like, a, is it flies have sticky fingers? The, yeah, you'll feel like you have those on your fingers. It's like gossamer, lightweight, beautiful. And it has a great sheen when you dye it. Also, we're going to be looking at dyeing Habitai or Ponji, and this is an example. It's more opaque, but it has more of a sheen. And we'll look at those uh, top down as well so you can see them a little more closely. And this is just a gauze weight. And then I also brought you a crinkle chiffon, which is new to the shop. This is a 3.5 and the crinkle chiffon is a 4.5. So this is just a few different examples of the weights of silk that we're going to look at dyeing. Now, um, let's look at uh, the supplies you need. And I know that I'm kind of, my head's a, a little chopped off, but I want you to see kind of what's on the table today and what we're working with. To start out with our silks, think about how important it is to you to get a perfect, perfect color. If you're concerned, if you're silk painting or you're concerned about um, any color not taking properly, then you can launder your silks before you dye them. It's recommended that you dye them with, um, that you wash them with like a synthropol or a detergent for fabrics to get out any oils that may have come from the person who was handling the silk before you or your the own oil in your hands. So you can launder them before you dye them if you like. All of the silks I'm sharing with you today, I did not launder before I dyed them. And I'm gonna give you just a quick look at these things so you can maybe see a little bit more. I'll try and hold this up so you can see. This is the Margalon silk. It's just incredible. Um, it's so light, light, lightweight, sheer, gossamerly beautiful. And here's an example 
of this dyed and then nenofelted as the inside liner of a cowl. And all of these, this ruching and clustering is intentional. I love the texture of it. For those of you who work with silk hankies or sorry silk waist, it's gonna remind you of that and how it clusters together. So that is the Margolon silk on our website. Uh, you'll see it, it says Margolon silk, rarefied, and it's available um, by the yard. It's, un, it's an unhemmed thing. We don't, this doesn't come in a scarf. This is the Habitai or Ponji. You can see it has a beautiful sheen on it, which is one of the great things about uh, the Habitai is the sheen that you get. And I just have, I didn't bring any, this is an example of what the Ponji or the Habitai does when you nano felt with it, is you get this beautiful ruching. That texture is really desired. And you get that because of the way the wool on the back grabs onto it. So this is what the, a habitat or pongee will look like and also over here is a little hand dyed one and with just some crinkling and the rest was left open. Really lots of fun to play with dyeing some of your own silks and like these are all this is a hand dyed gauze so you can see it's a little more dull Does, doesn't, gauze doesn't have the sheen that the habitat or the margolon does um, but that has its own merits as well so here's another Here's another gauze just see-through, so hopefully all that shows up. Um, and this is just cheesecloth, oh, by the way. So cheesecloth, you can't dye cheesecloth with the dyes we're using today, but um, you could dye it with food coloring or something like that. <laughs> cool. Okay, so we're gonna dye these silks, and let me just give you a few tips or things to think about before you get started. Pile all my stuff back here. Do you have a question or something first? We do. Thanks, gals, for being here. Gal, gals and guys, Kevin, I saw you out there. Hi, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe my dear husband, too. And hi, Speedy. <laughs> uh, Diane asks, do we sell all of these silks? Mm -mm. Diane, yes, thank you so much for that. We do sell um, all of these silks. And for those of you who don't know, let me just pop that up right here. So that's our website. And you'll see that there's a whole category that says silk and silk fabrics. And right now, all of the non-dyed silks are at the bottom. So you're going to get to that page and be hit with a load of color because we have tons of dyed silk scarves. I brought a little tree back here. Uh, so we have gauze weight and um, pongee scarves that are gorgeous. But if you want to dye your own, scroll all the way to the bottom and you will see the fabric yardage and you'll see the hem scarves as well. Thank you for asking that. Okay, let's look at what you need to get started. First things first, make sure that you get yourself some bowls and utensils that are only for dyeing. We really don't want to mix these with dyes. You don't want to ingest that. So get yourself some dedicated bowls. I have some you know, cheap plastic spoons that I use. I use wooden spoons as well um, and that. So get yourself some bowls and things like that. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to soak our silks in a solution with water and regular white household vinegar. I know that for some people in some countries, this is actually a little bit harder to get. We wouldn't think of that here in the States because this is readily available, gallons and gallons of it in the grocery store, three, four different brands all the time. This is just a, um, what's the five a five percent acidity and I've heard that like in Ireland that's harder to get so there's also the opportunity to use citric acid which is available in a powder but we just used white household vinegar that's pretty normal you'll want to soak your silks with uh, for about 15 minutes at least and I like to just soak them while I'm getting set up so do one part vinegar to two parts water and just measure it out pour you know use a measuring cup or something put water in your bowl and some submerge them while you're getting everything set up. So soak your silk so that they're nice and acidic because we are working with acid dyes and today I'm just working with these Jacquard acid dyes. This is, we sell these as well and they come in these little tiny bottles and for me they last forever. The way I don't dye big amounts of yardage, I dye yardage as I need it, but we also dye our locks with these very same dyes and um, just a couple of tips on your dyes I like to use one of these uh, bistro markers and put the color number on my 
jar lid so that I don't have to hunt for the color I'm looking for. It's kind of hard to read these labels and as you start to build a collection, if you're, I store them in a drawer that I basically look down into. So I put all of the numbers on the jars and then these jacquard, when you buy them from us, we're going to give you this little die sheet that shows the color of the die and references a number. So you might just look at this and go, oh, I want an orange. And you'll see that there's three, four oranges here that you like, and you just have that number 605, and you know you've got the right number. So mark your vessels and put your little die sheet in a sheet protector so that you have it available when you want it. OK. So while your stuff is soaking, I like to make little dye solutions and I like to put them in these little bottles right here. I'm going to be making emerald for the scarf that we're making. So that's emerald, it's number 629. And we have these little dye mixing bottles on the website. You'll just find them under the, the dye section. Um, so we're going to start with a blank little bottle, but how do you get this into that without making a big mess? That's my big hot tip. Oh, Ann, would you grab the hot water? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we, we want the, I want to use the hot water kettle. So I have the hot water going while I was waiting for you all to hang out with you all. And let's just talk about a few, a few more things about safety. Thank you, dear. Okay. Protect your hands, because I promise, if you don't put gloves on, you're going to get dye on your hands. Um, you should work with dyes in a you know, well-ventilated area. It's recommended that you wear a particulate mask, which I'm not going to put on, but you don't want to breathe this in. So you don't want a fan going in the room or anything like that. You don't want to leave them around for children or pets. Make sure these things are put away where no, uh, no one could get into them that you don't need to get into them. They're, um, I don't know that they're considered non-toxic, but they say like they might irritate your skin. I've never had that happen, but they'll stain your skin. So just make sure you wear gloves and you see I have on my fancy little dye apron today. The first thing I want to do is dissolve this dye in water so that I get it 100% dissolved. That's my method. You, not my, you know, it's not my method, but that's the method I like to use. And I'm just tapping a little bit into this bowl. I'm just tapping a small amount in. And this is my 629 emerald. You can sprinkle this. Some people like to sprinkle this right on their scarf if, when they're doing the microwave dyeing and they might add the citric acid on top of that. The reason I don't like to do that is because you get these little dye specks. And some people like the dye specks, but I don't want the dye specks. I just want color on my scarf. So if you don't want dye specks, and I'll show you some in just a moment while our, we're cooking our scarf, then you want to fully dissolve your dye in water first. And I'm going to put a small amount of hot water in here just so that it dissolves. And see, I already spilled. So I meant to tell you to protect your work surface, which I have done. I have. Um, plastic on my table so make sure that you protect whatever you have. I'm missing one thing again and if Ann wasn't here to save me I don't know what I would do. I need some paper towels. Thank you Ann. She gives me the... I forget these. I go from the room where we really do this stuff to the room where we pretend to do this stuff in here and I forget all my I forget all my goodies. So we have a dedicated room here at Living Felt where thank you where we do all of these things and as Kayla called it our washroom because it has a, a great uh, big utility sink in it and we have stainless steel worktop and we don't have to plastify everything. Um, so you might want to find a, a, a space and make sure you can use our thin uh, painters plastic if the thin painters plastic or the plastic that you get from us for uh, in your wet felting bundle and you can just use that to protect your work surface okay so just dissolve dissolve the dye all the way and then we want to get it into this little bottle and i tell you i made so many messes when i first um, started doing this because i didn't know how to go from one to the other i'm looking for oh i have my sink Here's my sink right here. <laughs> so this is my sink, and this is my method. Disposable cup or pour glass. You could use a glass measuring cup or something that you can pour out of. That's just the big hot tip. So get it into something that will pour, and then you can get it into your vessel. Your container, whatever. Now, remember, before you make too many of these, 
to pause and mark your bottles so you know what that color number was and that name was because it's very difficult to look at the outside of these bottles whether wet or dry and know for certain what that color will be so I'm just going to put the same thing on the outside that I put on the top which is the 629 but then I will write the color name emeralds on there okay now I have my three colors here. I have chartreuse, I have emerald, and I have teal. And with this, we're going to make the color that I call mermaid's tail. How are we doing? Are you guys having fun? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> are you guys going to dye stuff now? We just got to do stuff, don't we? We just have to do stuff. Okay. So to do this project, I'm going to dye in a bowl. There's a few different ways you can go about it, but for this step, we're going to use a bowl. I have a bowl right here's my bowl okay so I'm just gonna use a glass bowl and uh, I'll show you both uh, this view and we'll also look top down too so the first thing I'm gonna do is take one of my scarves I have two here in this bowl and I'm gonna squeeze the water out the more I'm not trying to get it dry I want it to stay wet but the more wet your scarf is like if it's super sloppy and mushy the more water that's in your vessel the more all of the colors will mute together so that's really up to you now we're not going to do any fancy tying or anything today this is quick get some color onto your scarf and you can put it back in your bowl any way you like this is a this is a slightly smaller scarf than um, I dyed earlier you can squish it, you can twist it. You Look, you could lay it on your work surface and paint it right like that, but I'm gonna put it in my bowl and we're just gonna squishy it up in the bowl and get some fun wrinkles in it. So if this is all I'm doing. I'm gonna get it in my bowl. And squishy it up. Here we go. Okay, so just squishy it up a little bit, and then we're going to start applying the dye. Oh, I had some. Okay, so this right here is the emerald, and I'm just going to put it wherever I want it. Okay, just gonna put it in a couple of spots. And I like to put on three colors at once. So that's emerald. I'm gonna go with teal, which is my favorite in this collection of colors. And I've made these particular colorway a few times, and what I like is like kind of like the minimal chartreuse. Uh, so sometimes it's fun to leave that last. If you have a color that is the lightest in your, let's say you're doing a trio, which is kind of a safe place, a safe way to go if you're doing a trio, and you have a color that's really light, like yellow or something, and you want to make sure that it has a prominence, you can do it first and then heat set it first also. Here we go, and then I'm going to put in the chartreuse. And really all I'm doing is hitting the white spots right now, all the spots that are white I'm hitting. I don't really want any white spots on this. If you want white spots left on your scarf, you might look at some shibori ties or even some tie dyeing methods where you bind the fabric, clamp the fabric, rubber band the fabric so that you get a real particular pattern or whiteness. And it's a lot of fun to do. But for me, sometimes I just want something that I can nano felt really well and easily. Okay, so now I've applied the emerald and I've applied the spruce. I'm going to open it a little bit. I mean, I call it spruce, the teal. I want to put a little more teal in there. And when I heat set this the first time, I don't want, I want minimal white, but I also don't want to muddy this up. So if you want some white, you can leave it just like this. The more you want it covered, 
meaning you want it to soak into the, the other areas, you can just kind of press it. Press it like this so that whatever moisture is in your bowl will get absorbed into that scarf. If you put too many colors at one time, then you will potentially really muddy up what you're doing. So if you don't move it around a bunch, if you go ahead and heat set it now and then come back and treat it um, before adding, you know, where else you want colors, then you won't muddy it up too much. But I see some white over here that I want to get, and I don't have, this is, like I said, this is my favorite color, the teal. Oh, I'm using emerald here the whole time. Not paying attention. Not paying attention. I like the, the teal in this colorway the best. Now, I have done this on felted wool the same colorway and really like it. In fact, I did a shibori felted thing that I ended up calling my mermaid's tail. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So once you have all the color where you want it and you've kind of mushed it down, like I said, don't move it don't move it around a whole bunch. Heat treat it now. And if you have these light colors that you want to preserve, then go ahead and um, you could do heat set it first. And let's do that now. You want to cover this with a plastic wrap so that you want the fabric to stay moist and you don't want this dye splatting all over the place. And you want to vent it. So you want to poke holes. You could use a microwave safe bowl that comes with a vented lid. But just vent it really well because you know this plastic is going to kind of blow up. And then I'm just going to microwave it for, I like to do two minutes at a time. You could, you might get to a point where you go, oh, I always do four minutes or I always do five minutes, but I like to do it two minutes at a time and then come back and check on it. Okay, we have a super quiet microwave, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna let that go right there. Okay, so I wanna show you one other way besides doing a bowl. That's a really fun way, and we actually had a happy hour party here doing this method, didn't we, Ann? We did. Yeah, so we just had like six or eight of us around a table. Um, we set up all the dyes in the middle, can't we, can we do that yet? We're still social distancing. <laughs> we set up all the dyes in the middle. Everyone got gloves and a Ziploc bag. And for this one, I'm actually going to leave a little more of the water in because we're going to use the water in the bag um, to help disperse the dye. So this is another method. And what you can do is I'm leaving it, like I say, a little more wet. Unfurl your scarf so that you don't have any unplanned folds in it. And then we're just going to put it back in the bag. Now, for this method, in the past we've used pipettes, but these bottles take the place of a pipette. And so when we did um, a dye party, we had all the dyes in like little cups, and then we just gave everyone little pipettes that they could just draw the dye in from. So then you just put it in here. I'm going to start this time with the chartreuse because you'll see it easily. And then you just paint inside the bag. So instead of the bowl, paint inside the bag. And then what's fun about that is it's easy to flip it over and do the other side. This chartreuse is a real interesting thing. It, it can look really super bright, like crazy aphid green, but then you mix it with something like an olive and it goes, and it goes um, an interesting gold color. So, oh gosh, it's been two minutes already. What do you know? Okay, so we're gonna let that chill. I'm gonna let that just cool down and we'll take it out in just a moment. Okay. So now I'm applying more teal. Now before I go any further, what you can do then is start to squish. Just squish the bag to disperse the dye. You can mash it to go in where you want it, but all of this can happen through the bag. And what a fun way um, even maybe to dye with kids because they have it in the bag, their hands aren't even touching the dye, and you just get to mush it all around. And then what you'll do, once you have all the dye where you want it on this, is you'll nuke the bag. 
and you'll do it, just leave at least a couple of inches closed, I mean, a couple of inches open. So seal it, but leave a few inches open on the end so that it vents. And you just put it in the microwave and dye it this way. But let's pull out our little scarf and see what's happening. Okay, so I'm gonna have to find, this is a really big microwave. So, let's see. Oh, somehow it transferred to this little bowl magically. I don't know how that happened, but somehow it jumped from the big bowl to this little bowl. This is a scarf that I did the exact same process on just before uh, the live show. And this is what it looks like after just two minutes of time. So after two minutes, this is what it looks like. And what I would do is go back and find all of the white spots and then tackle them again. So let's look at this. Here's what the scarf looks like. You can see it's really um, quite wet compared to how it was. And then it's up to you whether you keep these white spots or you hit them with the dye again and zap it again for a couple of more minutes. You could even let it dry and then decide what you want to do. But this is what it looks like after two minutes. Now what you want to do is add the dye to your scarves until you're satisfied with the color looking for my, here they are. Add the dye to your scarves until you're satisfied with the color. And then when you're satisfied, in, you know, you're gonna microwave it in two minute increments as you go. When you're satisfied with it, then rinse it just under cool water. You can let it cool all the way, rinse it under cool water until the water runs clear. Likewise in your bag, when you hold your bag up after microwaving it, the water should be fairly clear. And if it seems like it's not setting, you can add a little more of your vinegar water to the scarf in a bowl and go ahead and microwave it again. Um, you can even add a little bit of this water into your dye bottle, your mix bottle, so that you know that this has a little bit of acidity in it too. But if it seems like your dye is just not setting, um, with cool rinses only, you don't be soaping and hot watering it because the dye will more, likely, more than likely start to leach out. Um, just try and microwave it again and add a little more acid. Don't add the vinegar directly to the scarf. Just add it to a solution if you're concerned about that at all. Some dyes are always going to leach more, and that may vary by brand. If you're seeing a little bit of color runoff, notice whether it's just oh, the water is a little bit green or a little bit blue or a little bit orange, or are you actually losing color from the scarf? Because there's a difference between excess dye runoff and color not sticking to the fabric. When the, you know, your rinse water is just perpetually filled with color, then you know that the binding probably hasn't happened and you might want to increase the temperature or duration of microwaving, but also consider adding a little more um, vinegar bath to your scarf and microwaving it again at, for at least another two minutes at a time. Cool. Okay, any questions before we move on? Yes. <laughs> All righty, Sue wants to know, what are we looking for? What are we looking for to know when it's done? What changes? Yeah, what changes is that the, that is that the water is going to run clear. So the water is going to run clear for you or really close to clear. Like I said, sometimes we've added so much dye that um, what you're seeing is the excess dye runoff. And that's what you're looking for is for the water to run clear. And as far as the design, other than that, the design, it's up to you how solid of a coverage you want. This is just an example of really, um, just really willy-nilly dyeing, but this would make such a great addition, either a base for a Nuno felt scarf or addition to a Nuno felt piece or tapestry that you're working on. You can cut this. Sometimes we can't always find the exact color we want, like when we're thrift store scavenging for <laughs> silks for our Nuno felt. And the best thing you can do is just dye your own. So once you have it how you want it, rinse it thoroughly and then hang it to dry. So why don't I show you a few that have already reached that point and we have finished them all up and we're actually for the habitat we're going to iron it because it gives you such a beautiful finish. So I sneaky, I sneaky suck, snuck one back there and this is the habitat 
a habitai silk that I dyed with the same dye bottles that I shared with you and um, this is what it looks like when it's all all finished and I really liked the chartreuse I wanted this to be kind of a really blue green uh, fun fun colors and this one has uh, a pretty good amount of the chartreuse in it you can see and then if you iron this it'll give it a real nice finish Here is the Margolon one that I was showing you. Did I show, I showed this one. I gave you like a little sneak peek. A lot more sheer. Margolon's magic is one, that you can use it really sheer, or two, you can benefit from what it looks like when it's all clustered. And with this one, I used actually a little bit less of the chartreuse. I did mostly the teal and the emerald, and then just barely went back and put chartreuse in just the white spots. So that's these two together, both same colorway, they're going to give you different effects, different outcomes on your felt fabric. And then one more that I call Bursting Begonias, and this is oranges and pinks, and this is on our crinkle chiffon, which is really fun to nano felt with as well because it has like all these little mini, ti mini tiny pleats. I'll see if I, if I can show you that. Um, so here's what this piece looks like. I just used pink and two different oranges. And right here is an example of what I mean by um, the dye striking the fabric. I didn't have my dye um, dissolved 100%. And you see those little specks right there. Do those show up? Those look like these little specks right here, and that's where the dye wasn't 100% dissolved. So if you don't mind some of that, well then you can sprinkle and dye right on your fabric. But if you don't want that, then dissolve it all the way. And then here's just a look at the crinkle chiffon. It's like it's got these many, many little pleats, and when you wet felt with it, it just crinkles right up like that. So really fun stuff to work with this. And I did share the dye colors that I used for both of these batches on the sheet that you'll be able to download after the show. Okay. What, any final questions do we have, or what's everyone going to dye? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Let's see. Kevin says, I'd love to do this on bigger silk fabric for tablecloths. So cool. Oh, yeah. yeah. Fun, fun, fun. Instant scarves, instant gifts. Um, if you like you could dye this and give it to your mom give it to your girlfriend give it to your sister You don't if they're not into felt or if they live in a place where they don't they don't wear wool You know pick their colors and dye them their own scarf just iron it before you give it to them So why don't we make that the, the last thing we'll do we'll iron it and is there anything else? Um, to share what do you got Ann? Alrighty, how long would, will these dye mixtures keep? Oh, okay, so these dye mixtures, now I, I tend to make things in concentrate, but uh, you can make a dye concentrate. The dye concentrate suggestion is anywhere from a half ounce, which is this bottle, um, to an ounce per eight ounces of water. I don't mix that much, and I don't make mine that concentrated because of the way I'm applying it, but a dye concentrate can stick around for like up to six months but it suggested you keep them in the refrigerator before you go to use them again though heat them up because the dyes can settle and remember that not every color is going to be the same not every color will dissolve the same not every color will reconstitute the same and some dyes will colors will even shift over time but they say up to six months so if you don't think you're going to be using them in a short amount of time you might go ahead and put a date on your bottles um, and you can just do that with a little piece of um, like painter's tape uh, on the bottle. Um, the gals mark everything here with packing tape and then Sharpie on top of it. And then they use magic erasers to get it off. <laughs> so it's, the, it's become the fairy marking method around here. All right, I'm going to heat up my iron. And we'll just iron this little piece of silk. What else do you have? Could this method be used to cover silk that's already been dyed or does the silk have to be undyed? You you can over dye. Sure, you can over dye silk. You might, you know, if you're if you're going to dye something that's already been dyed, you might really make a point to um, launder it well, especially if you're getting something from from the thrift store. If you're going to over dye a solid, you know, you may as well just kettle dye, but you could certainly give this a go. Um, kettle kettle dyeing if you just want to do one big blanket over dye is probably the easiest way to go. And 
or so I'm just going to iron this iron this silk. Now if you get color bleeding off, well then you know you didn't you didn't fix it uh, quite well. So if you're unsure, then use an ironing cloth. And let me just give you a top down view here. Once once it's ironed, it's almost like when you iron you iron your your felt, you know, it just takes it to a whole new level. So if you're selling these, if you're planning to sell them or if you're planning to gift them, take the time to iron them. It's really going to be worth it. That's how it's just going to make it look so nice. And e like even if you don't wear these colors, you might find that these colors are perfect. You might find that these colors are perfect for your nano felt inclusions. There we go. Looks really nice, right? Once it's ironed, it just makes a whole, like you go from this wrinkly thing to this beautiful finish. Use the silk setting on your iron. Make sure that you have the, the silk setting so that you don't burn or over, over iron your silk. And just rinse it really well when you're all done so that it rinses clear. But you don't, you don't need to iron the margolon, so don't try and iron. I, I've never ironed the margolon. Just hang it straight. That's the other thing you can do is, um, you know, these silk scarves, you get them all wet, hang them, hang them straight, hang them to dry, then they'll, they'll, hang, they'll hang out a lot of the wrinkles, especially the margolon. But um, I've never ironed the margolon, so I'm not recommending that. And I wouldn't iron the crinkle chiffon because it's got all those crinkles in it, so you don't want to mash all those down. This is just more for the habitat. It's going to give it a real nice finish. Any other final questions or thoughts? Yes. Uh, Roseanne asks, is there any concern about the silk losing its sheen in the microwave? I know that, you know, ideally silk is not meant to get above 190 because you lose some of its sheen, but um, I'm fine with the sheen that is on this compared to what was on it before it went in. I still think it's fine. So if you're kettle dyeing, you want to really control that temperature, or if you're concerned about that, then use, the, use a kettle instead, or use a low immersion process instead, and put your thermometer in, and don't take the temperature up above 190. If you are using a kettle, or low immersion, like meaning you have very little water in the pot compared to the amount of the silk, use a thermometer, and you also need to keep it at that temperature for about an hour. So it's not as um, quick as this method, that may not matter, but like something like this, Margolon, absolutely gorgeous, and I've I've microwave dyed so many things that I've wet felted the margolon with, and the sheen is still gorgeous. So I don't see that at all, and this is a really delicate silk. What else? Oh, so many folks getting inspired. Margie's going to do this with her granddaughter. Oh. Poppy says, this looks like a forest canopy to me. It would be <laughs> wonderful in a wet felted landscape. Totally. Use it in your wet felting. This right here I thought was perfect for wet felting flowers, which was interesting that Holly chose the wet felting a flower kit to show because I think nano felting uh, flowers with this would just be gorgeous. Whether you used it for the centers or you used it for the petals, this, would be, these, this colorway would be so great for wet felted flowers. And I think the crinkle chiffon too so I hope you come up with some ideas and I hope that you're willing to play with it it's really easy again I only used three different colors of the acid dye and the only acid in the acid dye is the vinegar that you bring to it so otherwise you just have these little shelf stable powders and you can either use food grade citric acid which comes in a powder or you can use the um, household vinegar if you can get it for like 5%, whatever, whatever it is, whatever it is. So um, I hope you guys will give that a go. And um, yeah, I look forward to seeing what you make with that. Super fun. And so Anne's got some prizes that she wants to give away. Oh, yeah. Wooly Wednesday's not complete without prizes. Absolutely. <laughs> what do you got today, Anne? <laughs> we have got a whole, awesome. you tell. Awesome. <laughs> so behind door number one is a dyeing kit. So you can select one yard of any silk fabric that we have and two jacquard acid dyes. And we're going to send you the jacquard acid dye 
chart with instructions, mm -hmm. um, a, a, some bottles, and then so, of course some gloves mm -hmm. to help protect your hands. Yeah, so if you want to do this today, you can choose that and you'll be able to choose the type of silk yardage. Or if this isn't your bag and it's not really what you want to do, then Anne came up with another prize. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. Yeah, we've got a needle felting prize for you. So we've got some core wool, a variety pack of needles, an MC1 fall goodie bag, and then we're going to throw in a little bling pack. Bling, for bling. Okay, so we, how the names get into our hat, Anne brought a magic hat, and how the names get into the hat is for people who participated in the conversation or asked questions while we were working today. You've got one? Oh, I've got one. Okay. Alrighty. Okay. Ready? Ready. Okay, you go. Okay. <laughs> First name is Daniela Kretschmer. And Lori Harper. Congratulations, gals. So you get your choice of prizes. Just uh, reach out to us. Um, go to the Contact Us page on the bottom and let us know what is your choice of prize. If you happen not to be in our database, and I know you probably are already, um, if you're not, just give us your full contact info. And hey, if your name didn't get drawn or your question didn't get answered, after the live show, post it down below. All you got to do is close the live chat if it's open and post it in the comments down below or let us know what was your favorite takeaway and you'll be entered to win the same prizes we gave away today. And next week I want to tell you, I absolutely promise, have a very, 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 very special guest. And two weeks from now we have something mind-blowing going on. So right now what you want to do is get over to our group and um, make sure that you are on Facebook, you have a head, you have some history. We don't accept anonymous profiles. Um, you answer the questions. If you don't answer the questions, your application just goes away and um, you want to find out what's going on next week and the week after because it's really, really, really big. But we're first going to announce it in our Facebook group. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Thanks for being here today, y'all. We totally appreciate you. I hope you have fun dyeing and messing up some bowls and turning them into dye stuff and ruining an apron or two and using lots of paper towels and plastic and go dye stuff and then we can't wait to see what you make with it. All right, y'all. Have a great week. We love you. Bye. Bye.